It's been almost exactly one year since we started the build of this bathroom here. And it feels like for the first time, we're finally starting to tie everything together. And we're finally starting to make some serious progress. I feel like every step of this build here on this bathroom has been so time consuming just because building here in Panama is a lot more complicated. Also, when you just have two pendejos trying to figure out how to build a house. Pendejo means suckers and that's us. <laughs> so welcome back to today's episode of two pendejos trying to build a house in Panama. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. <laughs> so yesterday was a fun day because we had to get up on the roof and just drilled a big fat four inch hole through the roof. Believe it or not, but very few people here put extractor fans in their bathroom. And because of that, there's not a lot of the hardware to install the extractor fans. You get your hand on a fan, okay? but everything to get it outside, they really don't have it. But this, I'm not that proud of it. I mean, it's gonna work, it's okay. We did have to squish that flex tubing down just a little bit, but this is the best that we could do with what we had. We would have had to either import materials or drive seven hours to Panama City to get our hands on what we need. But I'm very happy that this extractor fan is installed and behind us, because that means we get to take this sheetrock and get it up on the ceiling and close out this chapter. 44 by 54 and a quarter. All right, 54 and a quarter. Okay, all set. Our first piece of the ceiling of the day is gonna go up right there. Well, I'd hate to say it, but getting that piece up was a little bit sloppy. Putting drywall on a ceiling is hard, man. It's so hard when you're trying to hold something heavy while being tedious at the same time. So little Sade Babe's feeling a little bit under the weather today. I think we have just a slight little cold, no big deal, a little stuffy nose, sneeze, cough, but you know, we're making it through. Mom and dad are just gonna have a few extra cups of coffee today and we're gonna be good to go. <laughs> And this is already all wired up, so all I have to do is take these lights, stick them in, and then just need to take these clips and tuck them in up into the ceiling. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, are you serious? It looks so good. I gotta be honest, I definitely don't have my latte art down, <laughs> but man, what a freaking upgrade we got in here. I feel like this whole side of our little home here was such an eyesore for so long because when we originally built this space, it was meant to be a workshop. But now that we know we're probably gonna be living in here for an additional couple of years before we actually have our permanent house built here on Lola's farm, we wanted to kind of renovate this whole section here. We did a whole revamp of this space and turned it into a coffee bar. I mean, come on guys. We can't own a coffee business and not have a coffee bar in our house. So let me give you guys a little tour. We got our grinder over here. Here's our espresso machine. This is actually the same model of the espresso machines that we have up at our roastery up in Vermont. These are all the coffees that we're recently trying for some launches coming out soon. Here's some gadgets over here. We got our Commandante, we got our pour over, some filters, some roses I got for Sade a couple days ago. We got our kettle, our scale. I even managed to fit my juicer and my Vitamix up here. But man, it feels so good finally having this space looking so much better. We actually posted a whole video on the renovation of this space on our Patreon. We post a bunch of extra videos on there. We post daily photos and a couple other really, really awesome perks. It supports us so much and it's just a fun way to express our creativity in a different way and connect with you guys. So if you guys wanna check out our Patreon, we'll put a link down in the description below. Hey, he better to just text me and uh, he wants me to take him to the hospital. Right now? Yeah. Why? What's going on? Enrique needs to go to the hospital. I'll be there in uh, like five, ten minutes. So what's going on? I guess it's Enrique's flight. Is Enrique going to be a dad? Oh my god, let's go. Wait, that's why she needs let's to go to the hospital? Go. You Wait, come with me? honey, yes? Wait, I want to go. 
Wait, can I come? Can I come? Wait, no, we need to. I'm so excited. I'm literally so excited. Honey, this is incredible. We need to be there. Enrique's gonna about to cry. Oh my God. Well, that was a very fast change of events. That was an emotional roller coaster. I went from Iberto needs to go to the hospital to Enrique needs to go to the hospital to Enrique's girlfriend needs to go to the hospital to Enrique's girlfriend is in labor. <laughs> If you guys don't know who Enrique is, he's been our farmhand here on Lola's farm for over two years. He's Wait, like the craziest part is we didn't even know that she was pregnant. <laughs> this is like insane right now. Honey, this is my chance. <laughs> this is my chance to practice my doula work. Kaylee uh, has a dream of being a doula after experience giving birth at home and all that. Let's see what you got, sweetie. You have to talk to her in Spanish. Oh man. <laughs> Even though this is such an exciting time right now, when we pick these guys up, we're not, we don't want to film them at all. We want to help them stay calm, reduce their anxiety, and just be respectful to this special moment that they have going on right now. Oh my God. Let's go. Enrique's going to be a dad. Stop. Get the precious cargo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I didn't know that he was... I didn't either! <laughs> and we're making our way down south. We're going down to the city. We got about an hour drive ahead of us to get her to the hospital. But I'm just so excited for Enrique. Enrique is one of the best human beings on the face of this earth. He is such an amazing friend, such an amazing part of our community, of our family down here. Enrique is of the indigenous Nobe tribe here in Panama, and I feel like getting to know him and working with him has showed me the real side of Panama and some of the deeper roots of Panama. And he's just such a special person in my life. I got a pregnant woman, get out of the way. She got a hot package. Coming in hot. Tu eres un papa. <laughs> Lucy daddies, bro. <laughs> well, we just dropped him off. Kind of seemed like they wanted their own, their own uh, privacy, their own space. Totally understandable. I think Kaylee's a little bummed. She wanted to be there for emotional support. Realizing that I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> we just got back to Lolo's farm. It's late now. I'm wiped, and we're on call. So, once she gives birth, we're gonna go down and pick him up with his brand new son. So, kind of gonna keep the phone on next to us on ring, and uh, can't wait for tomorrow. We got a little bit of a late start to the morning today, as I'm sure you can imagine, after all the excitement of yesterday and. It's gonna be a little bit of a different kind of day today. I feel like we're kind of all on standby waiting to go and pick up Enrique from the hospital with his new son, which is super exciting. And there's our lawn mowing operation in action. Be surprised how much grass these animals can eat in a very short period of time. We don't have a lawn mower here. We just move our animals around, put them where the grass is long, and in a day, they've eaten it all the way down to the roots. Don't mind my crazy mom hair this morning. It was a long night. <laughs> I feel like I'm just finally processing everything that happened in the last 24 hours. It was just absolute madness. And I know I definitely was getting a little ahead of myself. I feel like the second I found out that Enrique was having a baby, I was just like wanting to be so just present for that whole experience. And it's crazy witnessing how that situation was, you know, in this culture, more specifically the Nobe culture because she was just like so quiet and just like, you could tell they just totally wanted their own space. They didn't even really want to like talk in the car. We just put some music on, dropped him off at the hospital, and that was that. I have a good option. On what to do next? Yeah. 
What do you want to see? Do you want to see the walls up? Do you want to do the, the drywall or do you want to put in our door? Oh, Part of me is thinking I kind of want to do the door, sweetie. I mean, we can do the door. We can do the door. In all honesty, both of these things have been giving me a lot of anxiety. Mostly because we roughed in this door like six months ago and I have no idea if we did it to the right dimensions. And then the second one is, I've never hung drywall before. Well, we just did on the roof. Yeah, but I never on like, not like the walls. <laughs> we do the door first. And then the drywall. And then we do as much drywall as we can. We go all night until we can't go anymore. Or until we go and meet Enrique's baby. Ooh. Whatever, whatever comes first. Okay. We got like no excuses it. anymore, honey. We got lights in here, you know, all the, the, the ceiling electricity. I'm, I'm down to do the door first. Let's do it. Underneath our workshop right here has been our door. This is a big, heavy metal door. I think it's finally time to see if it fits. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god, are you <laughs> Let's kidding? go! How, how did this happen? How did this, this is like, like going to be the easiest install of a door ever. Usually the door takes us two days. I know. <laughs> Easiest door install. I'm only buying pre hung doors. From I was now just on. gonna say, let's never buy doors what? without it again. What? <laughs> I know, it looks so good. I love it so much, honey. Check how sweet these keys look. You had the baby. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You're gonna have a best friend. We're gonna have a little boy, a little baby hanging yeah. around. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wanna hold him? Yeah. Oi, I possible salida. It's funny because Spanish is my second language and Spanish is his second language because his. That's true. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's saying, today there are possibilities to exit. <laughs> and then he's saying he needs to pay before he leaves. Okay, so that means we have an hour and a half to go get some baby outfits. We're gonna go get him a bunch of diapers. And the mama said her favorite food is potatoes. So we're getting that woman some potatoes. Here's where we currently stand. This is gonna be everything I'm about to say. Let me just preface this by saying we're in a different culture. Panama is way different than the United States. And on top of that, Enrique is from the indigenous culture. En Enrique is from the Nobe tribe. And that's even further removed from our culture. So everything that's about to happen may be a little bit different than you're used to, but this is where we currently stand. We need to go down to David, go to the hospital, and pay for the services. We told Enrique we'd like to cover the hospital bill. After that, they won't start releasing her until they're paid. So once they get their money, they're gonna start doing all the paperwork to release her. We don't know how long that's gonna take. Then after that, we're gonna pick them up and we're gonna drive them up to their house. Now the thing that's gonna be really different that some of you guys might be really upset about. It's people in this country, especially in the Nobe culture, they don't use car seats. They think the safest place for their baby is wrapped up in like a towel wrapped around their, mo mo their mother's chest. The baby generally spends most of their first few days just wrapped up to their mother's chest. We're not gonna push on them the American culture of putting the child in a car seat and going through all that. We wanna respect their culture. We wanna respect where they think their baby is safest. So I just wanted to preface all that because this is a little unorthodox to what you've seen in the past. Is that yummy in your tummy, baby? Yeah. Yeah, you like your lollipop? This is, this is the point that we have gotten to here with the toddler car seat phase. Um, it has gone to complete and utter bri bribing. <laughs> Yeah, you know all the things they say not to bribe your children. You just gotta like make boundaries and follow through and this is what it is. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I would rather her have a lollipop than have her screaming for this entire ride. So that's just where, where we stand with that. <laughs> Welcome to the largest mall in Central America. Now they were working on building this place out for years and it was supposed to open in March of 2020. And if you remember kind of what was going on in March of 2020, it made this place, well it changed everything that it was supposed to be. From the end of March till about end of July, this country was in full blown lockdown. Like everything was closed except 
for grocery stores. And in many ways here in Panama, we're still dealing with the repercussions of that lockdown. And here's a good look at that. All of these were supposed to be stores. Every single one of these doors. There's maybe like 200 doors that are just empty. I think of all these spots, there's like five stores in this whole mall that's open. All I know is I have had way too much coffee today and we're about to go shopping for a baby. This is very dangerous. Baby carrier is the most useful thing. By far. Plenty of diapers. We might need me to be trying for, for another one. Yeah, okay. These here, boy dude. clothes. All right, that was great. That was very, very successful. You ready to go meet your boyfriend? Yeah. All right, let's go. Baby. We're gonna go get the baby. Yeah. yeah. So George just actually ran inside the hospital now to go and pay and go pick them up, and they're on their way out here now. I'm so so excited. Baby. The baby's coming. You want to see the baby? <laughs> Do you see the little baby right there? Look, it's just right there. It's a little baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's like speechless, dude. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to move it from you. <laughs> <laughs> so a YouTuber, bro. <laughs> Enrique is actually using our old, old, old camera from back in the day when, when we first started out vlogging and making YouTube videos. We it gave actually, it to Rodrigo yeah. and then Rodrigo gave it to him. <laughs> and it's so cute watching him vlog right now. I love it. I love it. Why is that bro? Another fente? Eh, ¿Qué tiempo necesito para retornar al trabajo? ¿Cuándo estás listo, bro? I don't know about you guys, but for me that was an experience, cultural experience, just seeing how different it is, seeing how differently it's done here, and going to the hospital too. Um, it's, I still don't understand how it all works. It's very, very strange. It's like you can pay if you want to, but you don't have to. I don't know. I'm still very confused, but that whole experience was, that was amazing. I just want to give credit where credit's due on this one, all right? Sadie and I edited this whole video, the two of us. She played a big part, so I just want to give credit where credit's due that this one wasn't me solo. But thank you guys so much for following along on this one. We love you guys. So much. And we'll see you next time.